Welcome back to Brick Model Railroad on YouTube. Uh, my name is Glenn Holland. And I'm Kale Lee Park. And in the spirit of social distancing, we're doing a remote product review today. Um, all three of the products going up on our website today will be socially distanced, uh, so recorded with social distancing in mind. Um, <coughs> right now we're looking at uh, Kale's newest model, which is the R49 uh, and R30. Nine uh, refrigerator car, 40 foot wood refrigerator car. Um, you can build two different versions of this car uh, with just some minor details. Um, I've got, I've actually got two. Kale only has one, so you know who's the. Real I'm winner? not sure how that worked out, but who's the real winner here? <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna fix that at some point. <laughs> well, yeah, you you can't, you can't just have like one reefer on a train. You have to have like 12. So, yeah, you need like two, three dozen, exactly. at least. Exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is a, just looking at this car, this is a really just awesome car. And Kale knocked it out of the park. He just he got the wood paneling look on the side, the door's open, the hatch is open. Where do you want to start talking about this? Um. Well, we can start a little bit with the history. So, right. um... So these cars, My um, golf. Battery they're critical. often referred to as the Dash 9 cars, um, and I'll get to that in, in a second. Um, these cars started out as part of the uh, 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 Pacific Fruit Express fleet, In uh, they were built My in God. the late 20s, early 30s. Um, uh, they were several different classes originally, and um, Pacific Fruit Express... Um, would continually rehabilitate their cars, rebuild them, because um, a lot of them were, them and stuff like that. yeah, yeah, because a lot of them were still wood cars. I mean, these these are metal; these have uh, steel underframes, but the entire bodies are uh, upper superstructures are all wood. So you know, every like ten years, fifteen years, they would need to go through and redo these cars. So about 1936, they started a uh, program to rehabilitate. Uh, 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 several thousand of these cars. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, they own a lot of reefers. So um, these came out of uh, several different um, subclasses originally. Um, R30-12 to 14, I think. And then, I'm sorry, R-30-11 R, R -dash, R -dash to uh, to fourteen subclasses, and then some R dash forty dash two subclasses, and they all re they rebuilt all of these cars. Um, they tore them right down to the frames. Um, they didn't they, uh, unlike some of the other modernization programs they had at the time. They didn't redo any of the like under frames and anything. They just tore them down to the frames, tore down all the wood structure. And then rebuilt that back up, and then they reclassified them with a dash nine suffix at the end, and that's kind of where these cars get like the uh, the dash nine name. And then these cars, that that program, that rebuilding program, lasted from lasted I think from 1936 up until the mid 40s, oh, so and then fun. yeah, and gave them another 10 years of life on these cars, and then they actually like rebuilt some of these again in the mid 50s. Oh yeah, and I've seen, you know I've seen cars yeah. <laughs> this all the way up like post steam era even yeah yeah some of these cars lasted up into the mid 60s quite um, time. and they were so they got quite a bit that so just consider mm -hmm. like one car as a unit lasting like three yeah decades yeah so yeah you said so you had cars that you know <laughs> through various rebuildings lasted from 19 the mid 20s up into the mid 60s um you didn't get a lot of life out of these cars yeah um, so I, I kind of picked this car cause I wanted to do a classic wood, wood sided reefer. Um, that doesn't get any more classic than <laughs> orange and dark red with Southern. And yeah. Eastern so, Eastern. yeah. So these cars, all their, all their upper superstructure was wood. So the, uh, the ends were wood, the sides were wood, the, the roofs were wood. Um, you know, you're, you're, you're really, it is your classic wood, you know, late steam era wood reefer. Um, and of course, you know, if you're, you know, for reefers, I mean, 
Pacific Fruit Express was the that's daddy. My, yeah, that, that's like <laughs> the reefer. They were, <laughs> yeah, they were, they were the largest reefer fleet in the U.S. at one point. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so if you're gonna do a reef, if you're gonna do a reefer, Pacific Fruit Express is a really good it's one a, to do. It's a good fleet. <laughs> And they they roamed all over the country. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we tried to. We'll talk about decals in a little bit. We tried to get a little bit. They're pretty western heavy this time around <laughs> instead of eastern heavy, um, like we have been in the past. But we did get a couple of roads that you would a little bit more commonly find in the east. So, but we'll get into that in a minute. Yeah. Um, you you got to talk about all the details in this thing now because this is just. <laughs> um, it's it's well. This is so. This is like my favorite freight car that Kale has built in like the last five years. It's in, it's it's awesome. It's such a <laughs> well. Um, I mean, one of the like well, first off, let's start with the opening hatches uh, open. for the ice for the ice bins. Of course, these were these cars were cooled by ice, so you needed some place to keep the ice. So they had bins in the ends of each car. And you would fill those bins through these hatches on the top. So these so open. Shove the ice in there. Yeah, the they would dump. They would dump ice in there, and um, also often salt. Um, basically, you know. Where is the melting point of ice? I believe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So all the hatches open, and you in, inside the car, you got actually have the ice bunkers. Which is there's one on mm-hmm. each end, and it's basically. Oh yeah, like I don't know. Like I don't know. If, yeah, I don't know if so, we can catch this on the camera, but yep, well, um, there's actually, actually. Model the ice. In it, <laughs> yeah, there's know. actually ice in the ice bin. <laughs> on both ends. Um, yeah, so there's that. Um, the doors open. Uh, on doors, both sides. I would say that they're poseable doors rather than like playable doors. Uh, the way that the well, sides are yeah, built, that might be a little bit accurate. The way that the sides are built, um, it's a little difficult to you know take them, you know, open them and without disassembling half the car. But they do open. Um, so if you have like a scene where you, you know, like a static scene where you're loading produce or you know any sort of refrigerated perishable product, you know, you can you can do that, which is a really neat feature. Um, yeah, not the, the too interior, difficult to open, but yeah. you know, like. There you go. So, yeah, these doors open. You know, you even have the uh, the locking latch here. Um, it doesn't actually lock, but well, yeah. it doesn't actually lock, but it's posable. <laughs> um, and yes, uh, um, yes, the the entire interior of the car is finished out. Um, and and you can... Built. So you yeah. Can, you can actually, if, if you're this much of an operations nerd, you can actually load stuff in there and then move it across the layout and then unload it. If you, you can. Like it, you can do that. That is, that is a you thing you can do. Do the easy way and just leave the vents open in vent mode or just close them and tell oh, them yeah. stuff yeah. Yeah, sometimes sometimes they wouldn't actually have these cars loaded with ice if for you know, for any reason they were transporting something that doesn't need to necessarily be cold. It just needs to be cool. They would just, leave, they would just leave They would just leave the roof. Yeah, they would just leave the ice hatches open as basically vents and, you know, just to get air circulating in the car to keep things cool on the trip. And Kale actually um, like Kale, you use like diagrams of the actual like ice bunkers. So the way that the floor is built with grill tiles, he actually changed the orientation of the grill tiles so that it would seem like the air is flowing out from underneath it. Yeah. Uh, from underneath <laughs> and over the top of the of the bunker. Cuz I um, cuz when I was building that I was building my first one, I said, "Does the orientation of this matter?" which I would have assumed it does. And he texted me back and said, "Yes." And he sent me the diagram and showed me like the actual like an illustration of the car and how the air was intended to circulate inside of it. Yeah. So, I I'm spent a ridiculous amount of time researching these reefers. <laughs> of course. Well, the refrigerator car is like your favorite. I, yeah, I love the refrigerator cars, and I'm I'm hoping this will be you know one of many reefer cars that we do for BMR. Oh, I mean, <laughs> you know, like you said, you have to have twelve, but they can't all be the same ones. Yeah. 
so I already have plans for another one. Oh yeah, and and then a couple more after. That. Not not this design. Another That's design. Um, one of the other <laughs> details, the the more noticeable details, is the um, the added like a raised ice hatch platform. So Kale, you have you have for reference. So yeah. This car here is. Um, does not model with the raised ice hatch platform, so it's basically just flat across the roof from one end to the other. Kale, as you can see on the screen there, has got a little bit of extra decking around the hatches. Yeah. And you can build so, any of the uh, decal versions for this car and any of the color schemes, you can build either version. Yeah. So um, that was a change they made midway through the rebuilding process. Um, the, uh, the purpose of the raised platforms... Um, was originally as basically a, a to give the people loading the ice into a car a little bit better surface to, to walk on because mm -hmm. the roofs can get kind of slippery. Mm -hmm. So they had these raised wood platforms around the hatches to kind of give the ice uh, the ice tenders a little bit more uh, traction. And then later on, they they uh, they eliminated that and basically just started putting. Um, uh, uh, like sand or granules in the paint right around that area, just to you know, give the paint more traction. <laughs> it's an easy solution versus yeah. You know, probably it would cost a lot less to just throw some paint into the, or there's some sand into the paint mix mixture. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, other details of the car: the the uh, all modeled with um, tiles along the outside to simulate wood paneling. Um, the ends are detailed, yep. of course, with um, you know, the standard brake wheel, the brake line, the ladders. Mm -hmm. um, underside detail as well with the brake and uh, the air brake uh, yeah. components, and of course our standard and yeah, our standard bearing uh, wheel set trucks as well. Yes. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's basically. So we can talk about decals now, I guess. Um, yeah. We have, uh, how many do we have, like, eight or twelve? We have, uh, for the reefer, we have eight different decal eight sets. Different so, there's two different, there's two different, well, so, the ones that we have here that look very similar are almost identical. These are, the only differences is that this is the later version with the Southern and Union Pacific Heralds on one side of the car. The mm -hmm. earlier version, which Kale has, has the Southern and Union Pacific on opposite ends. Yeah. Like the Union Pacific would be here and Southern Pacific would be here on the other side. So that's that's uh, two different ones. Do they come Let's on the same see. sheet though? Where you can Um you know, no. Uh if you hold on if you hold on a second I can bring up the different decal sheets I can sure. screen share here. We tried to um, do let me find a little bit more of a variety. Um they're yeah, obviously still very color. heavy on the Western railroads because the Pacific Fruit Express was a very was based in the western United States. Um, yeah. We do have um, an outlier, though, and I built that one. <laughs> I really like it. So the outlier, just while Kale is pulling up the, the uh, decal maps, is the is a Bangor and a Roostuk uh, car, a B-A-R. Um, it's got a really awesome, the Herald on it, I really like. And then you got Maine Potatoes on the other end. This is a really, this is like the classiest reefer ever because it's dark blue and white and reddish brown. It looks, it looks <laughs> really, really cool in person. Um, and as soon as Kale sent me like the decal art for this for the first time, I said, I have to build one of those. So, <laughs> I did. <laughs> All right, let's see if I can get this to work. You can screen share. Get yeah, oh, I gotta, I gotta give it permission. Hold on here. Just say yes. We have never recorded a video, uh, a um, product view like this before, but hopefully it works out. Ah, oh, dang. It won't let me record until I quit uh, and restart. Well, can you just list them off? And they'll be a bit, well, so obviously decals will be available at the same time as the reefer premium instructions. Hold on, on a second. On our website. Hold on a second. I can grab the book. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can so grab the book. Get the book. I guess I can show off while he's doing that. I'm going to show off the underside detail because it's pretty good too. Um, one of the really iconic parts of this um, of this car were the 
uh, the ladder steps that were basically centered under the door on each side of the car. Um, Kale did a good job doing that. It's really clean and easy, easy uh, assembly steps there. Um, the brake rigging of course is modeled in full. You got like the air cylinder and the different uh, piping and connections uh, down each side of the car as well. Um, it fully detailed, of course, which is of course our standard. So, I right, so yeah. got the decal. Of course. Now. Yeah, we have the uh, we have the lovely printed instruction book. Um, Show off the decal maps. Yes. Which are in one uh, the back of the book. And here we go. All right. So, the, so yeah. So there's the uh, the one above is the earlier version of the 1936 scheme or the PFE 19. Yeah, scheme. yeah. That would be the 19. That scheme was in use from 36 to about 46. Mm -hmm. well, so it had the yeah, it had the UP Union Pacific Herald on one side and the Southern Pacific Herald on the other because mm -hmm. Pacific Fruit Express was jointly owned by those two railroads. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so and then... Uh, 1946 scheme, which has the Herald on both sides, like I was just explaining. Yeah, and that was in, that was in use until... You could see those cars up through the mid-50s mm -hmm. in that scheme. And then... And we have Western Pacific, which is basically the same car, just with... Uh, different herald on it yeah western western pacific was uh um also uh a partner in uh, pacific fruit express mm -hmm. and, then, and then we have yellow and reddish brown um which is northern yeah or C &W, i think northern refrigerator car co oh yeah that that's the uh amp car the atlantic and pacific tea company yep that's, um, a, that's a neat look i love the uh yeah the red logo on the right side it looks really neat yeah. And Got here the we go. AR. Banger and a Roostook. Yes. Explaining that one. If you build if you build one of these and you live in the northeast, you have to build one of those. Um, <laughs> Burlington Refrigerator Express. It, of course you have mm -hmm. Burlington is that's yellow and reddish brown as well. Below that yes. Northern Pacific, also yellow and reddish brown. Uh, pretty standard. Got the Northern Pacific classic logo on that. I always like the look of those. They're really simple. And below that is, yeah. I think, Kale's personal favorite is the Wilson's Milk. Uh, well, I'm... <laughs> in addition, <laughs> one of the one of the subclasses of reefers I'm really into is, like, milk cars. Yeah. So, I had to I had to include a dairy reefer into, into the mix. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a neat looking car. Yeah. So, so we got some really if nice... I was a betting man, I'd bet that he was going to build that one next. Possibly, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we got some really nice decals for the car. Um, it's, it's an absolute excellent starting point, and no two of them are quite similar enough other than color scheme, obviously, but that was, you know, that's obviously yeah. very accurate. But the decals on the side are really unique and really eye-catching, so you could build all eight of them and like, put them in one train and they look really good and not too similar or too out of place. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, the, the Pacific Fruit Express reefers got all around the country. Mm. Um, and, you know, often often P Pacific Fruit Express during, like, the busiest part of their season wouldn't even, even though they had thousands and thousands of cars, would not have had enough cars in their fleet to meet the demand. So they would often lease cars from other refrigerator car companies um so it wasn't it wasn't strange to see uh you know a pacific fruit express reefer train with you know fruit growers cars in it and you know burlington cars and that sort of thing um you know it's just and yeah, you know vice versa reefers. yeah <laughs> well i think that about wraps up uh, everything that we had to talk about for this car i think we covered all the uh, i think so yeah well sweet so this car will be available at on what friday june 19th yes friday june 19th um, with all the decals of think, course and the other yeah. cars that we'll have available on that day as well yeah so we should be, be going good <clears throat> i was gonna say we should be going live with the uh with the uh cars in the new store at noon eastern standard time mm -hmm. So we will have a. We did transition uh, all of our products to a new brick model road or online store space, which is going to be much easier to navigate and much easier to use for uh, for customers. So we're really excited about that, and these will all be available on it. 
um, at, mm -hmm. uh, at June 19th at noon Eastern. Uh, so be sure to get get them there. Um, and this will be a regular premium instruction kit. This is not a limited run. This is just one that we're adding to our yep. regular lineup to, you know, yep. to have the standard product. Everyone and anyone who wants one. Um, we will make we will make we will make an instruction we will make enough instructions for anyone who wants one. <laughs> there we go. Well, I think that covers the video. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for watching and tuning in. Uh, be sure to check out the other uh, product announcement videos that we have going up today. We're actually doing three cars today: one by Kale, one by Aaron Burnett, and one by Matt Send, which is a, like a record-breaking thing for us. Um, Insanity. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> Really exciting, really exciting stuff. Obviously, you got a lot of good cars, and uh, you know, they all did a really good job on them. We're all really excited about them. So, uh, once again, thank you everybody for watching. Uh, I'm, this has been uh, Brick Model Road on YouTube, and we'll talk to you all later. <laughs>